Welcome to Family Basics 101. I'm Dr. Bruce McClure, and we will continue our series on family stress. Today, let's talk specifically about the various types of family stressors. According to the American Psychological Association, in a 2009 Stress in America report, the following stressors were found to be paramount in most U.S. families. Finances. 71% found to be the problem in most American families. Out of all of the American households, 71% noted that finances were the primary family stressor. 69% noted that workplace, work-related stressors were paramount. 63% noted that the economy created a major stressor in most U.S. families. More than 50% of adults stated that adult relationships with adult responsibilities were a stressing, whopping 50%. Five percent. Now, more than 50% of the adults polled said that relationships and the responsibility of adults, responsibilities of accountability, responsibility of being home when they're supposed to be home, responsibility of nurturing, responsibility of talking one to the other, said that 55% of their stress came from the home environment. These things dealt with things like military deployment. That was a major stressor on adult households. Aging parents turned up to be a major stressor on many households. Let's talk about life itself. I mean, just living. It appears to be stressful for a lot of people. According to Dr. Catherine Nordle, who is the executive director of the American Psychological Association's Professional Practice Division, she stated over 75% of all Americans operate somewhere between moderate and high stress on almost any given day of the week. Now, add to that the any given day, add to that holidays or other special occasions, and that brings additional stressors, such as financial, emotional, that will cause physical and mental health issues. You might ask, well, how does that work? During the holiday seasons, and we have sort of a compression of holidays, especially from November until about July, June of every year. From November, you have Thanksgiving, December, you have Christmas, January, you have New Year's, February, you have Valentine's Day, and then you get into the springtime, and we get into the President's holidays, the Martin Luther King Jr. holidays, we get into Memorial Day, and then we get into Independence Day. We just have holidays back to back to back. And many of the holidays have family memories connected. You have birthdays of family members that are no longer with you. And all of those situations that supposedly are pleasant could potentially turn out to be very stressful times for many families. When you look at the just the day-to-day -day life stressors and then you compound that with the holiday stressors, I hope you can see clearly why I'm suggesting that life in general, just like Dr. Nordahl has implied, can be a stressful occurrence. Let's talk about children and how children become stressors within a household. 30% of children surveyed stated they worry about the financial stability of their families, while only 18% of the children's parents said 
They thought the children stressed over family finances. So the children are more stressed in the home than the parents even know. Children are aware of the financial woes, the relational woes, the economic woes in a home. Many times we think we're concealing our stress from our children and those under our roof. But you will be surprised to know that children sense and children respond to the stressors of fighting. Children have to respond to the stressors of families basically complaining about the ineptness one toward the other. So children create stress because of the stress of the adults in the home, but also children have to deal with their own stressors. They're growing up, so they have peer stress. They're concerned about their appearance. They're concerned about what they wear. And if there's financial stress in the home, then the family is going to struggle with what the children think they need in order to be accepted outside the home. So I hope you can see globally that stress within a family comes from many, many different directions. Stressors can lend itself to a lot of family insecurities. In the book of Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 14, Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the sin or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, Send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in heart. Moses is sent on a mission by God. And yet, because of Moses' own stress, where did the stress come from? Moses, if you recall, was raised in Egypt. And Moses understood how the Egyptians operated. And Moses understood further that if God is sending him back to Egypt to deliver a whole nation of Israelites, Moses is stressed. The stressors are coming up in the day-to-day -day operations of Moses. And he has to be honest with God. I have a speech impediment. I am concerned about how the king of Egypt is going to respond to me because I have seen how he operates. And I've seen how the Egyptians operate. And now you are asking me to go in? And Moses is just being honest. He has some insecurities about that. And the insecurities are really creating stress in this man who will deliver an entire nation. And the comfort, the cure for Moses' stress is God. It's God who's talking him through the anxiety and the uncertainties of his woes. I'll see you back in class again tomorrow. Don't be late and don't skip class.